I was expecting this thing to be pretty bad. Logitech, the company that makes my favorite PC mice and some, what I would say, budget or like mainstream keyboards, decided to make a game console. And that's kind of exciting. It's exciting when any major corporation decides to throw their hat in the handheld ring. But the difference is that this is a cloud gaming device. Ew. But it seems to have the backing of Microsoft. Phil Spencer seems to really like it. Hideo Kojima seems to really like it. It's even on the Microsoft store. You can buy it there. So it's kind of billed as Microsoft's Game Pass machine, just made by a third party. The biggest problem here is that this thing is currently $350. There was a short window where you can get it for $300, but right now it's $350, which is way too much for something that is essentially just a cloud gaming machine. And cloud gaming doesn't require a lot of technical specs or anything. You can use a pretty low powered machine and all of the previous reports of this thing were talking about how low powered it was. There's not much exciting tech in here. But this thing is essentially just an Android tablet. And if you've been here before, you know exactly what that means. Emulation. But Logitech can't just come out and say, hey, you can play your GameCube games on this thing. Because if they say it, it's illegal. But if I say it, it's a feature. So this thing had everything working against it. An expensive price tag, big competition, a focus on the type of gaming pretty much unanimously scoffed at by hardcore gamers such as yourselves watching this probably. But this might just be the best piece of hardware to come out this year. If you happen to have one just all into your lap and if there was no competition out there at all. This video is sponsored by Factor. Oh my God! I have so much to do. When am I gonna find time to eat? I have this little sliver right there. What is that? Eight minutes? That's like seven minutes to cook and one minute to eat. What could possibly fit in there? Ow! My eye! Factor meals can heat up in the microwave in just two minutes or in the oven in seven. They require no prep time at all and no mess. It saves you so much time on planning and cleanup so I can finally get to the important stuff or I can just enjoy the holidays without wasting hours in the kitchen. Factor now offers 34 meals per week and 36 plus add-on options like smoothies, juices, snacks, and more to keep me going no matter what I have going on. I get excited every time there's a new factor box that shows up at the door because it means I don't have to think about food for the rest of the week. I can just throw it in the oven and I'm done. And you can try it for yourself at home by going to go.factor75.com slash yahungry60 and use code yahungry60 for a whole 60% off of your first factor box. You should be impressed that I remembered all of that. Ow! Mmm and about 30 seconds to spare. I wonder if I have anything to drink. Okay, all right, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. So taking this thing out of the box was quite an experience. It's just like sat there. Damn, it's just out like that? That's just it? That's just how you do it, huh? Wow. But it's a beautiful console. It's got some nice beefy grips, but look at how thin it is in the middle there. It's a joy to hold. The thumbsticks are only slightly concave, almost flat, and they feel fantastic and smooth, almost like they have one of those slippery rings on the edge, but they don't. Since the grips are so big, the D-pad doesn't feel like it's in a bad spot. The D-pad is huge, concave, and clicky. The buttons aren't that great, they're a little shallow, but they are slightly clicky, so that's a plus. And the shoulder buttons on the back are analog. It feels a little weird when they bottom out because of the plastic sitting high on the back, but it's a minor issue. Overall, this is maybe the best feeling handheld on the market right now. It's the perfect in-between, between like a small switch light and a big Steam Deck. And the screen has been getting rave reviews by others who've gotten their hands on this. 
It's a seven inch 1080p screen that's 60 Hertz. And the screen does look very nice. Now it just needs games on here that could look very nice on this screen. It's also very easy to set up in the way that they want you to set it up. It's just an Android tablet, so you go through the regular old Android setup. But once you're done with that, it throws you into its own proprietary launcher, which is kind of sick. Oh, oh, you're all, you're all here already. Okay, I like it. It looks like a game console and it comes preloaded with Xbox Cloud Gaming, GeForce Now, and Steam Link. Why is there no PlayStation Plus Premium app? You can play it on the PC. Why is there no app for the, for the phone? I only really tried Xbox Cloud Gaming because that's what I have and that's what I was interested in. And it's great, no noticeable lag, but my internet is pretty solid. I've had more input lag on a TV before. It was a little blurry looking though. So we're probably somewhere at 720p or lower, which will look pretty muddy on a 1080p panel like this. So that's basically all you would buy this thing for, which makes it seem like a really stupid idea to, to even have this thing exist. $350 just to stream games seems like a bad idea and you're just tethered to Wi-Fi, so you're probably only gonna be playing this thing in your house, and that's where you probably already have another console that's capable of streaming games. I guess it's competitively priced if you stick it up against a Nintendo Switch OLED, which can play games untethered. But, like I said, there's a lot of buts about this thing. Like I said before, this is just an Android tablet. So if you want to make this thing better, you can slap some emulators on here. If you want to make it as easy for yourself as possible, you can just go to the Google Play Store and just download whatever emulators you want like that and they're all, they'll all just show up there. Or you could just plug it into a computer using the USB-C port and transfer APKs from there. Or you can put all of your ROMs on a micro SD card, just like you would for any other portable emulator and slap that into the micro SD card slot. This thing only has 64 gigabytes of memory and one third of that memory is taken up by the Android OS. So you only have 40 gigabytes left after that. This thing really is just built for cloud gaming. But I was able to fit all my ROMs I wanted to on here anyway. I downloaded the MMJR versions of Dolphin and Citra and put those APKs on the device. And then I downloaded Aether, Redream, Moopin64, and finally RetroArch for everything else. And you could just stop right there if you're lazy. That would be totally fine. But I downloaded Dig as a nice, pretty front end to navigate all of my ROMs and automatically load the best emulator and core for them. You might have to set Dig to open the right emulator, but it's pretty easy. And as you'd expect, the emulation quality is pretty incredible. Even for a console that was claimed to be low spec, it plays a pretty decent GameCube. It's not as good as a Steam Deck, but it was slightly easier to set up than a Steam Deck. And it never claimed to be a powerhouse, so it was surprising to me. The analog shoulder buttons even worked right out of the gate. You can see the various levels of Falcon's shield by pressing the R button at varying pressures. It didn't play PS2 to my standard. There was some slowdown, but I've seen a lot worse slowdown on other similar devices before. So if you're playing like PS2 JRPGs or something, this really isn't bad at all. And of course, any system older than those will just run fantastic. Most of these emulators took almost no time to set up. Most of them recognized the onboard controller immediately. And the ones that didn't just needed some manual remapping. And this setup allows for easy navigation of all of your ROMs and even your streaming apps if you still wanna play some of those too. But if emulation is all that you want to do on this thing, Dig also has a feature where you can set it to start on boot. So once you turn this thing on, it'll just take over your whole screen and you'll have easy navigation of all of your ROMs right when you start the device. 
There's other sorts of emulation front ends that exist out there. This is just the one that I use because I'm familiar with it and I think it's pretty easy to set up. There's LaunchBox and some others that escape me right now. But I'll be honest with you, I kind of really like the Logitech UI here. My biggest gripe is that there's no hardware back button at all on this thing and no swiping hotkeys either, which is fine for the apps that Logitech wants you to use. But when you're doing literally anything else, it could become a problem. I lied, there is a hardware back button on here, but it's B and, and that's necessary when you're playing a game. So it doesn't work as a back button when you're playing a game. Some of these emulators require a back button to change settings or leave games, which is impossible if the B button is mapped to something in the game. This made it hard to say, remove the display controls in Dolphin. I had to not map anything to B in order to even get to that setting. Also, this Logitech launcher doesn't allow for multitasking at all, which is like, fine if you use it the way they want you to. It kind of acts like a game console, like the Switch in that way. But again, it's not fine when you want to do anything else. Like even just to access Chrome while you're in an emulator to look up a setting or, or to look up a guide for a game you're playing or something, it became really annoying. You also can't like swipe down like you normally can in in Android UI. You can't like access the quick settings or anything that way. It made me wish that this thing had some sort of feature where you can just access the vanilla Android launcher whenever you want it. Kind of similar to how the Steam Deck will let you access the Linux desktop really easily by just pressing the power menu and going right to switch desktop and you could switch back and forth pretty seamlessly. That would be a really cool feature on here. But it seems like Logitech doesn't want you to leave their nice pretty walled garden that they've made for themselves here. Which I'd honestly be fine with if it allowed me to do everything that I wanted to do because I do like the UI they have. I just wish it did a little more. There's like a trade-off between ease of use and just basically locking you out of helpful features. Logitech does have a very robust controller remapping option in the Logitech launcher. All in all, I was able to accomplish what I wanted to with this launcher, and it's nice looking enough that I don't want to switch to another one, which I'm sure I can do with some flashing or something. Obviously, I'm not saying this is a perfect console by any means, but it does surprise me, and I will say that I do really like it. I just struggle to recommend this to anybody because I have no idea who this is for especially at that $350 price tag. For $50 more, you can get yourself a Steam Deck that is way more powerful and can do all of the same stuff with a little tinkering. Getting Game Pass on there is not an easy process, even if it is technically supported by Microsoft. This is Microsoft telling me I need to enter a console command. <laughs> and the G Cloud is $50 over the price of the Ein Odin which is smaller and more powerful. Damn. And is Android based. You're just losing out on this gorgeous screen, which doesn't even really matter because the streaming is probably only gonna be 720p anyway. The only benefit I can see here at all is that this thing is readily available. You can buy it right now and have it shipped right to your doorstep. All of the other like portable emulator things that I talk about here are perpetually out of stock. It, you have to wait forever to get them sometimes. So if you're willing to spend an extra $50, which you'd probably end up paying on shipping from Hong Kong anyway, then this might be a good option. I'm gonna put this thing down before I drop it. It seems like Logitech saw all these other companies coming out with their own streaming devices and they saw the market there and they decided to come out with their own. But I don't think they realize that people aren't buying those niche devices for cloud streaming. They're buying them to put emulators on. And that's not exactly marketable. Or I guess I should say it's very suable. So they can't put on the box plays GameCube games. Those other niche companies rely on people like me to say it for them. But this isn't one of those new companies with a niche. This is 
a major corporation with a lot of different product lines. I do believe that a device like this has the potential to hit mainstream audiences. Just not this particular one and not at $350. They're going to have to try again, but I'm excited for this new handheld future we've found ourselves in. I like that Logitech entered this space in the first place, and I have a feeling we're gonna see a lot of other new heavy hitters enter this space too. We have Razer coming out with one, I think, early next year, and there's just gonna be more after that. Although I have even less expectation for that Razer one because that's supposed to be more powerful, but it's just a Android phone with some controllers slapped on the sides. Just make it a, make it one, make it one, you are, you have the jungle cat, like that's, you have, you have everything that you need. Just, just, why'd you make it shitty? Anyway, what do you guys think about the Logitech G Cloud? Is it, it where, who is it for? Is it for any of you out there? Is there a use case that I'm just not thinking of? Would you trust a company like Logitech more than you would trust one of these new companies like Ein or Aya or Anbernic? Or, or are you just gonna wait for it to, to hit the bargain bin? I, I suspect this thing will drop down to $300 pretty quickly. Anyway, leave it in the comments below, at me on Twitter or any and all this other social media garbage. I usually stream on twitch.tv slash wolfden, but I, I'm taking a little bit of a break. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm in the, at the time this video goes live, I'm in the middle of moving. So I'm gonna be consistently posting here still, but be patient with me on all of my other platforms. I need, a, I need a break somewhere. Anyway, thank you, who was it? Factor. For sponsoring this video, don't forget to check out them out at the link in the description below. And of course, the most important things you can do here is just subscribe so you know when a new video goes up, which is at least once a week. And share this video with a friend, a friend who will, this will maybe get them into portable emulation. Thank you very much. Have yourself a very good week. From right here.